Hey traders, this is T. Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat, one of the top mentors and moderators of chat. And today I got a very special video for you guys. Every single Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a new member orientation video with a Q&A at the end. And today we have week seven of the recorded Q&A. And while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. All right, so this is a Q&A, man, week, uh, week seven technically recorded. So I just kind of wanted to open this up to any questions. Uh, I think you guys have already been writing a little bit, so I will, uh, I will look through this really quick. Then we can get to new questions and talk about, you know, whatever it is, guys. We can talk about some very key topics, you know, whether it's hard stops or trend or what I look for or, <laughs> yeah, you guys just been blabbing, huh? So I don't need to go back through this. Uh, TZ, you uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> talking about broker stuff. All right, I, I feel you. All right, well, let's get to new questions. So what do you guys want to talk about today? Who is having trouble with maybe like um, psychology or like trends or, or, you know what, actually, I got an idea. I put together a video that I actually want to show you guys. Yes, yeah, here it is. I put this on my stories and I edited it together because I really, 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 I, I covered some topics, guys, I really think we should talk about today. And uh, I was just in the mood to create a video, and I want you guys to watch this. I really do. I hope you guys can hear it. It's only like three minutes, but these are some really key things that we could talk about today, and um, I think this is pertinent for any major trader. So let, let's watch this, because I want to talk about some of these things. Number one, Tosh, I don't know what to trade. What do I do, long or short? Dude, pick a niche. Pick one play. Master that. Build bankroll, then venture out. Long, short, options, futures, I don't give a shit. Master one. All right, so let me pause it in between these. Guys, what I just said right there is very key for new traders. This is going to be a good structure today to talk about. When you are new, and I'll get to any questions, but let me just kind of rant for a second. When you are new, guys, the number one thing I see traders doing that is the wrong thing to be doing is you are trying to trade everything, right? You are trying to trade everything. So you're like, I gotta nail this, I gotta nail this, I gotta nail this, and I gotta nail this. <clears throat> Here's the difference. These are in backside over a multi-day runner. This is a day one that's trying to find its direction and trend, and this is a full-on front side trend that's still you know, intact. My point is, is these are honestly like almost three completely different setups, and you have to identify with what works for you. So, you know, one of the number one things new traders do is they just, they just try to spread themselves too slim. They try to trade options. They try to trade futures. They try to trade small cap equities. They try to dip. They, God, it's like trying to look, it's like trying to be a painter an electrician an engineer tomorrow, start a business and say, Hey, I'm a mothership company. What do you need today? Oh, you need an electrician today. You need a fucking engineer tomorrow. Oh my God. Let me juggle hats. Let me race and try to figure this out and find my contacts. Dude, find one niche boil it down whatever that is me personally are the aktx's i don't even like things like this like rkda and yrid i trade them i do because i've been trading for so long i'm well versed into a lot of setups but here's the thing guys you know what my criteria is it's day ones it's the death lines and it's the it's the death candle so i am specifically looking for stocks like this it's done here look i'll show you a 15 day chart it's done jack fuck all for the last week or two weeks. Excuse me, I'm going to say that now, but it's done jack shit for a while. It's up on a new catalyst. You read through the news and you go, okay, is this fitting in my criteria? And then you go to FinViz and then you go to BAM SEC and you understand if it has dilution. I'm not trying to get a scalp on this. I'm not trying to conviction swing this and I'm not trying to hit this at the same time, guys. I'm like, if there are my setups, I'm going to play them. If there's no setups, I'm not going to play them. The thing about trading is you want to lose as least as possible. You're always going to lose. That's just going to happen, guys. You're going to take an L every now and then. But if you limit your losses, it's super key because here's what happens. A loss is a loss twice. You're going to lose mental capital by trading something you don't know. Like what? This is under VWAP, right? This is technically front side trading. If I were to short this, there is no, and I mean zero, indication that this is a breakdown. It did not slam through VWAP. This is a trickle down. It's even wicking, which is a sign of a reversal. This is nothing but front side. If I were to short this, I'd be an idiot. I would be guessing my ass off right here. Now, 
if it went up to retest, you know, a resistance level and I wanted to catch a first, you know, kind of like first resistance short, like Bao does, that's a smart move. But if I were to open up a short position right here, it's a 50-50 gamble and I'm being an idiot. It's front side, it's basically higher higher lows. Um, it's kind of making a lower, a lower high right now and like a lower low, but I'm telling you right now, this is front side. This is no indication of backside. Where would I want something like this? I would probably want a serious neckline. I may start attacking under that. And then I would go even by 10 cent increments. So I'm looking for, a, I'd be looking for maybe a 340, maybe even a 320. Like I'm trying to figure out where the longs are in trouble. I'm not trying to guess. This is what new traders do. They don't define a niche. They go, oh, this looks like a short, let me short. Bullshit. That is the way I promise you guys, you will lose, you will lose, you will lose, and you will tread water for years. Whether if you just wait for your setups that you, see, look, look at this shit. This is probably just going to go back up, man. This is not a convincing slam. And here's the thing. If it does break down right now, then okay. It was a gamble. Like, I don't like gambles. If you're guessing in any form of your trading, you've already lost. So remember this. A loss is a loss twice. You lose, you lose mental capital, you lose real capital. So not only are you losing your account, you're losing confidence that the next time your setup does come that you're comfortable with, you're going to be hesitant and shaky hand and like, oh my God, do I pull the trigger on this death line that's perfect, but I'm, but I'm being a little scared bitch because I fucked it all up on this and this and this and that. So stop spreading yourself so slim, guys. Stop. A miss is just a miss. There's always a play tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And guess what? If you have to go a week without trading, boo-hoo. Welcome to the industry. Welcome to what it takes to be a real trader. I have no sympathy for guys who are like, I, and I'm very blunt. I'm very direct, man. I'm, I, I like to pride myself on being like a, like a tough love coach. I have zero sympathy if you're like, Tosh, I didn't trade this week. Good, good. Build that discipline and guess what? Hit the shit out of the stock that you know how to play when it shows up. Um, so that's my rant on that. Let's watch the next one. I hope you guys are liking this. I'm, this is a new structure for me. Because uh, I don't give a shit. Master one. How do I know whether a stock is a long or a short? Trading is all about trend. Are you on the right side? Who is stuck? Are longs in trouble or are shorts in trouble? That is the first question you should ask. Backside or front side? Boom, this is so key. I probably should have done that first, to be honest. Guys, here's the thing. What trend are you playing? If you are trying to trade anything, look, scalping is different. You know, Bao scalps all day. Bao can literally scalp there. I can't do this. I cannot do the style that Bao does. Me, Bao, and Alex trade so unbelievably different, even though we trade the same setups and the same tickers every day. And that's the beauty of trading. You can take something from everybody. I have completely taken some skills from Bao over the years. Uh, Alex has taught me some amazing stuff. Like, I literally got the death candle strategy four years ago from Alex personally. I've utilized it. I've tailored to what I do specifically with it. The waterfall candles, um, I kind of like made that my niche, which nobody was really talking about. Uh, chasing those because the bigger the candle, blah, blah, blah. But my point is, is what side are you trading? So unless you're doing like a lot of scalping and stuff, guys, you've got to know what side you're on. And even if you're doing scalping, so like Bao, right? If you look at, well, actually, let's find it. Let's fucking find it. Where's Bao's chart? I want to see his uh, IEA chart because I want to talk about this. Uh, this is this is really key. Uh, is that it? Yes. Yes. Look at this guys. This is my point This is this right here. You see this? Okay, I want to I want to talk about this This is called front side shorting New traders you can totally do this, but you need to know how to do it. So this thou is looking For daily resistance levels into his shorts. He is looking at the daily if you understand this he is inputting his lines on the daily. You see what I'm saying? Where the resistance levels are. Now, if we go back to intraday, you have to understand, he knows that this is not a conviction hold. This is not a wire, a wire or IV, and this is not an RKDA yesterday. Like, this was yesterday for RKDA. This is not like, hey, I'm going to short right here and then cover down here. He knows front side shorting. When you're shorting into a parabolic, into a stock that's going up, you need to have front side covers. And that's Austin's major um, quote, which is one of the best quotes that's ever been said about anything trading. If you are shorting right here in a daily resistance level, guys, you better be paying yourself to that fucking wash. If you are not, you are 
going to get squeezed back up, but this is an identifiable pattern such as this. You can hit the resistance level short here and then cover into these washes, you know, piecemeal. Whatever you do, you know, you can piecemeal out because if this came back, you can kind of just break even on the second cover because, you know, maybe you did want lower, but pay yourself. So what Bao is doing right here is hitting resistance levels, hitting daily levels. He knows he's getting in for 10, 20 cents, and he's going to keep doing that. And here's the thing. Anyone that tells you, oh, I, uh, the only way to make money is to, is to grab 70 cents in one move, is to short here and cover here, bullshit. Bao is making 20 cents all day, and guess what? By the end of the day, that 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents, 20 cents, it may be a $1.60 gain, while the guy that shorted right here and held all day, which is ironically more my style, I'm, I'm like dogging myself a little bit, but the guy that holds all day may be making way less money when Bao is literally just in and out, in and out, in and out, but he's protecting himself. Does that make sense? Front side shorting requires front side covers. Again, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna go through a lot today. These are really important topics, and I and I am recording this so you guys can watch this again. What side of the trend are you on? This is front side. Why would you be shorting this if you're new and you're not doing bow style to where it, you know it picks up to resistance levels, then taking a quick cover? I don't trade that way, so I do not even attempt to short at this. I do not trade like bow. I trade very different. I'm waiting for the AKTX death slams. But not in this market. I'm giving it a couple days before it hits something like this pop back up because I know that this is just going to get pop back up, pop back up. Or there is at least a good chance of this. Again, let me cover that. When you come out of a market for two to three weeks where shorts are annihilating, 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 and just winning in almost every single trade. Guys, it was almost impossible to lose the last three weeks on a short if you sized eh, somewhat moderately to a little, a little bit to moderately and just held. My God, what, what, there were no moves like this. So once it was up, it was just going down. This is why some of our moderators were shorting pre-market and covering him in the day. Nothing was continuing. My point is, if we are not in that market anymore, and this is what's called market sentiment. I pay attention to this weekly, and I've been doing this for six years. It's one of the main things I talk about, which most people don't talk about. And it's, I, I don't know, I guess it was like one of the things that made me stand out in the community. Every single day of course but every single week i am taking note are chasers flush with cash or are shorts flush with cash because whoever it is is going to have confidence going into the next day guys while algorithms and while big money and funds and institutions are involved in these stocks there is a lot of retail sentiment what is retail that's britney that's adam that's me that's stock slayer that's page that's mine we are retail so what is happening when everybody gets smoked every single day, chances are the next day, if they are, if something's up and there's no good catalyst and the trend of the market, the trend of small caps for a week or two weeks has been going on, it's going to continue that way until, until, and this is why hard stops are the most important thing in trading because it only takes one stock to be overly biased and wipe you out. Let's go to RKDA, 15 day. Again, this is a lot for new traders, man. This I, I didn't mean to give such a detailed webinar, but put some charts in front of me and I'm going to talk. This is what happens if you're a dumbass who just shorts and holds and doesn't have a stop in place. This is what happens, guys. It takes one stock to obliterate you. So while this was, here's what happened. So I'm going to walk you through this. We were in a dead market for longs. Longs that had no place for two or three weeks, right? Everybody started shorting right here. And I remember a, even a lot of our moderators and a lot of really good traders that I follow on Twitter or I know or their friends or friends, blah, 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 whatever. They got smoked because here's what happened. RKDA came in the mix and said, hey, I'm done with a shorts market and I'm done with everything fading and like AKTX going down here. I want to start lighting up this market. And it only takes one, guys. We talk about this all the time. Three weeks can change in a blink of an eye if the right stock comes along. And here's what happens. This is day one of our key VA. It does it, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, front side. What is front side? I'm going to fucking draw it. Look. <laughs> that is front side. This is called a front side over, this is like a, a multi-day front side. This is a multi-day runner. There is no death lines in here. There is no backside, guys. This is a super saiyan. This is like Superman launching into the heavens, man. He's trying to find the sun up here. And then here's what happens. Just higher shorts holding. Oh, hold from four. 
oh, $10, you're done. Your trading career is over if your size too much in and you can't weather a five, ten, seven, ten dollar move. That is why hard stops are the most important thing in trading. You play towards the market sentiment with stops in place every single trade until it proves you wrong, and then you stop. You don't revenge trade. You don't say, I'm gonna be a hero and attack this. We've been in a dull market. You always prepare for that super saiyan that's gonna or <laughs> this is a funny analogy, probably one of the funniest I've ever heard, but you know, Bal will say, like, you know, Lex Luthor comes in and brings the kryptonite dildo you know which is mean? like dude you got to protect yourself man you've got to protect yourself i've seen guys you can take it from me i've been trading for six years val has been trading for 16 uh alex has been trading for six and we can all tell you the same we have seen so many some of the best traders you've ever heard of they're not around anymore because because this is what happens man they size 50,000 200,000 shares right here they cannot they cannot put a hard stop in place, cover, admit defeat, ego, and then they just get squeezed to 10, man, and then they're gone. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Shit, I'm missing a lot of this stuff. I'll, I'll go back after all this stuff, guys, but let me, let me get this out of the way. So what trend are you on? This is a middle trend. This is a no man's land. This is really just no, this is no, you can, mm, this is arguably backside, but I like true backside and this is not it. I need this thing breaking down down here, breaking every support, just making, I don't, VWAP, when something VWAP reclaims, this is no man's land, man. It's busting through VWAP, it's going under, it's busting back through, it's going, this is, this is just a no man's land. You know what the trend is on this? I'll draw it. Here's your trend. A channel trade. There's your trend. Channel trading. But it's like the channel is really small, you know what I mean? It's really just like the most of the volumes in between here. But my point is, is like, this is, this is no trend. This is a trend. This is front side. This is front side. Now, this is backside. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you're breaking such key levels on the way down. Guys. These are the time to strike hard on the short side. Days like this, days like this, I saw a lot of traders in our community, or not a lot, but I saw a couple guys take a hit. Uh, I got a couple PMs on it. They're like, man, I shorted the shit out of day two. I go, why? 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 Where's your backside, bro? What the hell are you looking for? My God. It's, uh, man, I just, you guys got to learn this shit, man. I'm telling you, I'm I'm a, I'm a tough love coach, but I'm trying to really teach you guys this shit. Be safe. This is stupid short. You can, but man, if you're new and you're trying to build a bankroll, you're doing it very wrong. All right. Um, let's see. Next. Let's go to the next part. Backtesting. Screenshot every major runner. Write down news. Write down volume for the day. Write down the float. Short float percentage. Finviz. Bam SEC. Then play TOS on demand. Think or swim. Replay the fucking day. Write this All right, so we'll stop there and I'll just mention this really quick. Yahoza, RKDA just took a tank job. That is disgusting. That, that's what I look for every single day, guys, confirmation. I'm, I'm done for today. Like, I'm, I'm not trading more today. I, I do not open up short positions in the last hour because anything really can happen. But I'm going to tell you right now, these candles, that is the fucking confirmation for in the start of the day on things like this or um, days like this, like this is a trickle down. If I got that candle, I'm going in. I'm going in. This is Long's bailing. This had 321, look at the volume right here. When I hover over it, 321,000 selling pressure. Right? This candle had 11,000, 320, almost 322. Nasty, nasty. So pay attention to that guys. That's my confirmation. I wait for these every day. And then I attack like a hyena, like a pack of hyenas. So it's up to you. Find your niche, find your confirmations, whatever you like. Um, but that's what you got to figure out yourself. So back testing. So I just we just watched that video. So what is back testing? Back testing has a million forms to it. One of the number one ways I did it as a new trader is here's what I would do. I would take a screenshot of every major runner. So for the first three years of my trading career, guys, I studied. 14 hours a day. I screenshotted every chart. I have thousands saved somewhere. I can't find them anymore and I don't do it anymore, but I'm done back testing that. I swear to God, it's tiring. When I was new, I, I had the stamina. Now I'm like, it takes a coffee just to take a piss. Um, but my point is guys, screenshot every single chart that is a major runner. And then what you can do is there's an on-demand feature. So check this, click this. This is a replay of the day. This is a replay of the day. So, uh, I, I don't know. Well, give, someone give me a runner from like a week ago. Does anybody? Oh, well, we'll do, let's see. I, I think it only goes back to like, I don't think they did the last two or three days. Um, let's see if uh, RKD, no. Whatever, guys. I'm not going to show you this right now because it'll take too much time. But look, you can input the day. 
of whatever runner you said. Um, I could go to the MIC archive and literally look something up that Alex posted, go to that specific day, and then literally replay the day and fast forward and all this shit, man. This is all simulation. It's unbelievable. So you click out of that and now back to a real account. Um, <clears throat> Uh, by the way, I only use this for charting, so I, I, I've got some money in here, but I'll never trade with Think or Swim. I, they're, they're, not, they're, they're, they're not tailored to the short side, man. You can long with them, sure, and like you like buttons and cool stuff like buy mark. I've got some money in here. Like I could technically, I better, <laughs> let me not market order into some random shit. <laughs> I'm going to regret the hell out of that, <laughs> showing you guys that I got like fucking 4,000 shares in a YRIB long when I don't want that. That's a bad idea. Um, so let me not accidentally press a stupid button and be like, oh, great, I'm long a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> so you guys, you, you come to my webinars, and it's really just comedy hour, um, make fun of myself. Um, what next, what next? So, uh, uh, so I want you guys to screenshot charts, do TOS on demand to backtest the day, and then write, oh, look at this. See, you see what I'm saying about, look, this is the channel. I would, I would give it to the base. I'd give it to the base. This is pretty much the channel, guys. I would... There's no trend here, man. Maybe I'd take a short right here and scale to the 280s with a stop at 285. But, I mean, this is this is just channel trading until it breaks the channel either way. So it might break out or it might break down. And then you cut it, you know, if you're on the opposing side. But, I mean, this is really just channel trading for now until it proves otherwise, until it goes here, until it goes under. You know, these are really key levels. Um, so that's something to pay attention to, you know, range of a, range of a stock, range of a move, you know. And then VWAP comes into play. But back to um, back testing. So write the float down. Here, I'll draw it out. This is what you should do when you're new every single day. Oh, see, look at this. Yep. Let's see if it goes to the wicks. I usually go to the base. I'll scale to the wicks, but let's see. It'll probably break down at 280, um, but we'll see. You know, I don't like channel trading for this specific reason, though. Write down float. Write down news. This is what you screenshot every day, guys. This is what you screenshot every single day. You're going to screenshot the chart, and then you're going to write down the, the screenshot on the chart. This is why Thinkorswim is so cool. Um, let's see if this breaks down right here and focuses on the channel. Might keep going. This is really strong. See, this is the reason why I don't, um, it's 12, so that we have one hour, guys, of market left. This is a lot of volume coming in. I do not open shorts in this time frame because of this bullshit. I mean, that's a, that's a fuck you candle of shorts, man. Like, this could really keep going, and this could, you know, go up after hours and continue the next day. And remember, guys, remember um, sentiment of the market. We're not in a market where this is going to be an easy fader. Chasers are a ton of money right now. They do. They, yeah, yeah. Seriously, clueless. I, I hear you, buddy. Um, the market is full of chasers, guys, and the longs are flush with cash. You're not going to get easy fades right now. You're just not. And if you do, you know. It might be like this. It might be a tongue twister. It might be a, it might just be a little bit of a headache and they're not convincing slams. And it's just like, I'm telling you right now, chasers are supporting moves like this right now. That's why I'm only dipping my toes in until I can really, really gauge sentiment. So, uh, yeah, so write this down guys, you know, and then back this on TOS on demand. So there's your, there's your way. And then the two, um, resources that you want to use are this. <laughs> Man, if I had this webinar when I was, uh, in the beginning, I would have I would have cut my own learning curve down a lot. This is what I love helping you guys, man. If I can help in any way a new trader just not waste years of their life, fuck, dude, that brings me a lot of joy, man. So BAM SEC, guys, this is the way to uh, do the fundamentals. And then FinBiz, <clears throat> if you guys are not aware, FinBiz is a fantastic resource for um, looking at the criteria. You know, what's float, like things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, the enthusiasm. I get too passionate, bro. I get too passionate, man. Then, then all bets are off. <laughs> you guys know me too well. Yeah, see, look at this shit. This is why I will never open up a short into the last hour. You see this bullshit? Now it's just breaking through the channel. It's super strong on, on volume. And remember what I said in last week's webinar, guys? Do you remember? Here's what I do. This is a trick of mine. 40% level of morning volume. I write 40%. If it starts breaking over the 40% level, this has a very, very good chance of continuing higher and really making a strong move. And look at this. If you were short under VWAP, that is your guide to get the fuck out short right there over that 40, 50% mark. And that is nobody talks about that. That's one of my main things. That's how to stay safe. That's where you put your stops in place. And the minute you don't obey this stop, you're dead. What if you got a 240 average or a 246, now it's a 284? You could have saved yourself. 
on this by watching this. Dude, I'm telling you, man, you can learn price action and you can learn little uh, nuances and subtleties. Uh, that's a golden nugget for sure. That's one of my biggest methods for staying safe and not a lot of people talk about that. Uh, all right, let's, uh, so that's out of back tense. Let's go to the next one. My family says trading is gambling. What is it? It's educated risk. You can wait for A pluses with patience and discipline every day, or you can play C and D setups like an idiot and tread water for five, eight, ten years. It's up to you. Patience. Wait for the 2020 blackjack hand. All right. So I already kind of talked about this earlier a little bit, but I'll just say it again. Is guys, if you are trading C and D setups and you're like, hey, maybe this is a short right here, you've already lost. You have already lost. You are waiting for key confirmation levels to be tested and broken or break down if you're long or short. The point is, is focus on what works. I mean, that, it's as simple as that, guys. It's as simple as that. So we'll, we'll, kind, of, we'll kind of go to the next one. How do I know if a stock is going to run 30 cents or $3 on me? What is the range? What is the float? New traders don't know about range. This stock has a float of 700,000 or 1 million or 10 million or 20 million. That is range. So, here's a good example. If RKDA was a 20 million float, we would not have seen a move like this. I, I'm, I can almost guarantee it. What was this on day one? This was like a 2 million float or something. I, I literally cannot remember, but oh, hey, Adam, see you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, rewatch the rest later if you want. Dude, this was a low float that once it caught wind and chasers jumped into it, this is range, guys. You have to pay attention to shit. So not only can you go to the daily chart and see like, hey, you know, where has this stock been to before? Like, what is the range of these moves? Like, this can really make big moves on a run. You know, look at these days. Like, wow, this went from five to you know six here or whatever it is and you have to count for reverse splits but it doesn't even matter just in a percentage basis you can see that this makes big moves and then there's stocks that don't and the float is very correlated to this so you know i don't short anything under two million sometimes even three million float because here's the thing man these things can squeeze to the heavens and do rkda move oh oh god or this or mtc look at this move dude who would have thought that this stock yesterday could go from two thirty to fourteen to thirteen dollars, dude? Are you kidding me? This is why you got to pay attention to range. You know, if you're shorting even, dude, new traders, if you're shorting five hundred shares down here and holding it, you're dead, dude. You're dead. You have to wipe out your account or make a big hit. So again, guys, like, what's the range of a stock? This is not a heavy, heavy range stock. It's just not. It's in the price action. It's in the flow. You know, I think the daily chart is a little bit like. It's a little bit like range, but as you can see, oh, like the big moves, like the last time I made some big moves, they're not crazy. I just mean it's not an RKDA, right? It's not an MTC. And you have to know these things, you know? And then there's some stock where 30 cents is a big move versus $3. Um, and back to the last video, um, is, you know, is trading gambling? Look, we are professional gamblers. I'm just going to say that anybody that tells you trading isn't gambling is full of shit or they haven't been doing it long enough. You, sometimes you just you just get screwed out of left field and you followed all your rules and it happens. But I'm gonna tell you right now, while a lot of this is out of our control, we are professional gamblers. It is educated risk. So while you can definitely get to a point, guys, where you can have an 80 to 90 percent win ratio, that's educated risk. If you can go to the casino and just bet on blackjack hands that are you know 20 hands or 21s and bet after you see your cards, like that always talks about then I, I'm going to tell you right now, man, then, then that's called educated risk, in my opinion. So you, you become the house and at least the odds are really, really in your favor versus just being like, Hey, this is a 50, 50, this is a 50, 50. This is a 50. It's not like that. That's pure gambling is um, just equally, you know, equilibrium supply and demand, right? It's just a 50, 50 or maybe a 64. Like, so the point is you really have good odds. If you pick a niche, stick with your niche and only play that. Uh, let's go to the next one. Why are losses important and why are wins important? A loss you lose twice. You lose mental capital and real capital. Mental, you get drained and you don't have confidence when your A plus has come. A miss is just a miss. Well, I already talked about this one guys earlier, but that's the, that's the whole thing, man. You take a loss, you lose twice, mental and real. Um, if you just miss, you're just, <laughs> like my face. You're just gonna you're just gonna miss. So that's that. Tosh, I never get enough on my positions and I end up covering like a bitch. Okay, use much outer lines and you're going to hit harder. So what would be your starter usually is now your starter is your second ad. Now hit harder, tighter risk. Now, this is a key one. This, 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 this is a key one. If you're a morning trader, if you are a morning trader, right, here's what we're going to do. 
I'm going to show you guys an example. There we go. All right, guys. So let's let's define outer lines versus inner lines, right? Like this is this is key. I have a lot of traders that PM me. Um, you know, a lot of the time they're like, hey, you know, Tosh, like I, I start in too early, you know, I never get enough on my position size or like, like, what would you recommend? And I'm gonna tell you right now, man, there, it, it's, it, it's as simple as this. Again, trading is not easy, but it's simple. There are inner lines and there are outer lines. Now, you have two options basically when trading, right? If you, if you scale, like I do, I scale every trade, Dow scales every day, Alex. So, you know, these are like inner lines, man. Like the stock opens up like down here, right? This is an inner line. You can hit these or you can wait for things like this. And let me change the color so you guys can literally see the difference. This is an, in, this is an outer line, man. These are, these are just outer lines. The stock has got to make a big move up to get to these levels. So um, actually, hold on. You, can you see the blue? Maybe I'll make this red or something. Is that like a pink salmon? Salmon color lines. God damn, that's ugly. Uh, but that's what's there. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah, look at this. That's why lines are important, man. Look at that fail right there. See, lines, man. So look at this. If you play the inner lines and you're like, hey, Tosh, like I'm going to short a little bit right here, a little bit right here. And look, oh, and then I got squeezed out. You could have just waited for the outer line, bro. You're scaling into the inner lines. And I wish this one was like up to here and up here. There'd be a much better example. But these are outer lines, guys. And this is why a miss is just a miss. If you waited for this level, and then while you're adding all the way up in your inner lines, you're like, man, I got to start it here, but my average is such shit. I got to keep adding to get my average up. Oh, shit, it's shit. Then you get squeezed out. What if you did this to your trading new traders? Listen to this. Listen to this. If this area is where your second or third ad would usually be, make this your starter into this line and hit hard. Hit hard. You see what I'm saying? Hit twice as hard because you would have just, it would have been the same as if, and you would have had a terrible average had you scaled right here in the inner lines and you would have added, added, added. So now you have the same that what your freaking starter would be here. And now you have a perfect average, man. Jumping in too early, Oleg. Yeah, that's, dude, jumping in too early is the way you're going to lose money and tread water for, for a long time, bro. It's just the fact of the matter, man. And here's the thing. Today, say these, these are your outer lines. You go, Tosh, I, I, I didn't trade RK, or, uh, AKTX because it didn't hit my outer lines. What did we just talk about? Good. Your discipline is intact. It was safer. You, you, you didn't take a loss, so you missed. Hit tomorrow, and then when you're you know, getting squeezed out here, if you just wait for the outer lines and hit harder, dude, you're, then you win. You, here's the thing about outer lines. Val talks about this. You waiting for outer lines and waiting for the 2020 blackjack hand or the 21 and then betting is basically you are going to be, um, you are going to be in. A, it's a lot less trading but your win ratio is going to be so much more because when they do come, guys, you're literally betting a perfect hand or a really good hand. When you just try to play anything, then you're just, you're going to lose a lot more. You're going to be trading a lot more, but you're going to be losing a lot more. So, and then this just preserves mental capital, man. It's just, what are outer lines versus center lines, man? Why are you paying attention to these? And these aren't even pivots. You know, if I put the pivots in here, it might be a different story. You know what I mean? So like, there's just so many ways to incorporate lines or like your own drawn lines or the pivot lines. You know, there may be a pivot line right here and that's the line you focus on. You see what I'm saying? And then you wait for it to get there or at least you start scaling a little bit into that level, you know? So if this is your outer line, like, and you know, that's a long way, right? Say that's your outer line. You can start a little bit right here. Like that can be your starter. But you still start in like right here and here and here. And by the time it gets to where you should be starting in, you're, you're, I'm filling you, you know what I mean? You're filling my orders because I'm waiting for this. So now I'm shorting into your covers, um, into your cover outs. So, you know, me and Alex are hitting you. Don't be that guy. We don't want to hit you. We want MIC members to bank with us. <laughs> so have patience, have patience. Uh, next. Are stops important? Why should I use them? A limit stop will not necessarily get you out. Teleport candle, fuck you to shorts. You're doomed. It might not fill. Market hard stop. Guaranteed fill. If enough volume, you're going to get encounter some slippage. You're guaranteed safe. I don't get All right. Who heard that? So for anybody who is not using hard stops, you have to. 
RKDA is the best example. If you just short and don't have a hard stop in, you're dead. So here's what happens, guys. Here's what happens. Let's talk about this. Actually, let me just, all right, let's do this. Well, that's a lot easier. Wow, I should have done that a long time ago. Um, here's the first two days of RKDA. Here's what I usually look for. If I do short front side, right? If I do, I want these death candle slams through VWAP. I really do. I'm not hitting these right here above VWAP because they can get bought right back up. This is a death candle slam, but it's not. It's still complete front side, and this could bought, get bought right back up as this is support that lines up with VWAP. But here's the thing. If I did short this, if I did, say I shorted, I would have shorted the pop. Say I shorted right here. I would put a hard stop right here, guys above the death camera, right, where I'm getting in. Like, this is a key level. Like, if there's a big-ass slam and I short a pop, usually it's under view up, but I'm just, for the sake of the argument, if I'm shorting right here, I put a hard stop here every time, at least, like, above the death camera or just over, because this is a key level that if it breaks above it on a technical sense, dude, this, this is going to keep going probably. So here's, here's what happens when you don't respect a stop. Look at this. You can't predict these all the time, and it takes one trade. So hard stops, I lose, what, 30 cents? What is it, 20, 30 cents? Or you hold on for $9 or $1 or $2 or $3, whatever it is, guys. Stops are going to be the most important thing because here's what happens, man. Sometimes you get a teleport. Oh, RKD the first day. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Look at this. You, you short right here, you don't have a hard stop in, you get teleport candle, guys, you're screwed. If you short, put in a stop, long, short, it doesn't matter. Uh, I remember a lot of our moderators had stops in, and guess what? You encounter some slippage sometimes because this was a huge teleport, but it's going to get you out, man. You're going to be protected, and you're not going to be a deer in the headlights stuck, and then it keeps going up, and you're like, oh, my God, I could have stopped out right here. I could have stopped out right here. I could have stopped out right here. Like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? That happens. I've so many years of that, I've been a deer in the headlights and I'd be like, oh shit, I can't take the loss now. It's too much. I'll wait for the come down and then boom. And now it's double the loss. It's triple the loss. And new traders go, dude, I was making $300 a day every single day consistently and I just lost $5,000 a day. I don't know why. I go, did you use a hard stop? They go, no. I said, dude, you just answered your own question, bro. You just answered your own question. All right. I don't want to rant too much on that, but you guys get the idea. You are not using hard stops. You are trading wrong. I'm tell I'm I'm literally going to be as blunt as possible. If you're not using stops, you need to use stops. Uh, right here. Fuck about win percentage. You can have a ninety percent win rate, and guess what? One trade wipe you out. One two months of gains. Consistency. Max loss on the day. Call your broker. Have them cut you off. I'm only willing to lose this X amount of my account. Key. It, it, it ties into what I was literally just saying, guys. I'm not, how much are you willing to risk? Are you say you got a thirty thousand dollar account? You shouldn't be taking four thousand dollar losses, man. At the most, you should probably be taking like at the most thousand fifteen hundred, man. You got a thirty thousand dollar account, you're losing four grand, bro. No, no, no. You cannot lose that much percentage of your account in one trade. This is why max loss on the day. You set not only do you set a hard stop, you call your broker up and you say, listen. Chris at Cobra, you know, whoever, whoever's your guy, you say, bro, cut me off if this stock hits $500 red on the day. Cut me off if it hits $30,000 on a day. I don't know your account size. You might be a multimillionaire and um, you can weather $30,000 losses. I don't know, but you have to do it in, in uh, specificity and correlation to your account. So I can promise you guys, if you're not using hard stops, max loss in the day, and you're not protecting yourself by calling your professional brokers and saying, protect my dumb ass when I'm being stupid, you have to. And that's what keeps you in the game forever. You can have a 90% win rate, guys. I don't care. That doesn't matter. I traded for six years. And let me tell you, do you know how many months I would be green every single day for a month? And then that 31st day, RKDA happens. I didn't use hard stops back then. I'm a fucking ego guy, man. I go like this. My shit my shit don't stink. I've been green for 30 days. Hold, hold. Oh, fuck, fuck. Oh, fuck. And there's month gone. You're covering here. Month straight of gains. Short, short right here. Cover right here next day on the gap up. I'm fucked. My month is gone. I never let this happen anymore because of the things I just said in the video to implement. All right, next. Confirmation versus anticipation. I'm anticipating that a breakdown is going to happen, a death candle slam through VWAP, or I'm going to wait for that death candle slam through VWAP, wait for that confirmation and hit on a pop back up to VWAP. That is confirmation. You're waiting for the thing to happen. Boom. 
one of the most important things that could ever be talked about in trading. Yep, dude, yes. El Cooley, you just said it, brother. You said, not to put you on blast or anything, but dude, 16-day win streak and lost half on one. Yes, dude, this happened to me for years, bro. I literally thought I was like a fucking king trader. I was like, man, I'm, I'm awesome. I'm the shit. My shit don't stink. And then boom, kryptonite dildo. <laughs> You're just like, holy shit. Dude, it's like, show me where they touched you on the doll. Like, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. It's, I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm not trying to be too funny or anything, but I'm telling you right now, this is a very serious topic. If you are, you've got to protect yourself. If you're losing more than two, maybe three days of gains in a one loss, you are trading wrong. And your risk, you don't have risk management. Your risk management's out the window and you're going to lose. You're going to tread water for years. And I promise you, you're eventually going to fatigue out and have trouble in this industry. I'm as blunt as I, as they come, baby. I'm going to tell you what works. I'm going to tell you what does it. If you are green. And so oh, here's the thing. If you're making $300 a day, every day, you start losing any more than 900 in a single trade. You are trading fucking wrong. Wrong. You, you start taking $1,500 losses, $3,000 losses. You have have to get on some calls with the moderators. You have to learn how to trade and how to apply risk management. You are trading wrong. And I'm very direct about that because I was trading wrong for years. I was trading right. I was trading right when it came to patterns. I was trading right most of the time. But that 31st day, bro, your win ratio doesn't mean jack shit. Oh, man. I hope there's not like 15-year-olds in here and they're like, man, mommy, this guy teaches good information, but he curses. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'll try, to, I'll try to be a little bit more relatable to the young audience. Um, I forget that not every trader is like the 45-year-old dude uh, with his own house. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. Um, what next? What next? Oh, so what, what was the last one I just talked about, guys? The last one that just came up? Um, shit, I got to watch it myself. What, what was the last one? Hold on one second. Let me just get reminded. Confirmation versus oh, oh, confirmation versus anticipation. Okay, so here's here's a good one. RKDA today. These are my confirmations. This is a huge one. So if a stock is up or it's in backside and I'm waiting for massive confirmations, this is a big one for me. I love the death candle slams through VWAP. This tells me that longs in that second are really in trouble. Now, given certain times a day, not in the last hour, I'm not looking for this in the last hour. I'm just not getting in here. And not usually a multi-day runners, but if you know if this is a day one and we're in the morning or midday, and I get a big slam like this, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Now, what's the comparison? That is the confirmation. I let this happen first, and then I get in on the pop. You know, maybe when it comes back to view up or whatever for a leg back down, and then you know, ideally we the pattern follows suit and we get a leg down, the next leg down. So right here, a good example of anticipation is uh, what is it? IEA, yeah. A good example of anticipation is this. I do not short when it breaks VWAP like this. This is just, this is not convincing. This is, if it goes under VWAP, yeah, that's technically a bearish sign technically, but you know, the trend's still intact. And this is the thing, these are little trickle downs. This is like, let me put my pinky toe in the water. No, I want someone to cannonball, bro. I want it to go down here, break these necklines, break supports on the way down, and then people gotta panic. Everything in trading, down to psychology and human, it's human emotion. It's panic. What are you taking advantage of on the next move? A squeeze. You're taking advantage of all the shorts panicking out. What are you taking advantage of on a death candle or waterfall candle slam? Is that any longs who chased above VWAP or right here over a key level are panicking in the moment. So the next leg down, I'm going to take advantage of that. It's going to be quick. It's going to be concise. It's going to cut like a knife. All we're doing is playing panic. People's emotion. You're taking advantage of people's stupidity. As, as mean as that sounds, as immoral as that sounds, whatever you want to, you know, jock it down to, that's why I like morning trading. You know, there's a lot of stupidity in the morning because that's when retail is involved and a lot of less funds, a lot less big money is involved. And that is the time that all of us and all other people and dumb, dumb traders who know nothing on forums on, you know, um, Yahoo Finance are like trying to guess what the stock is going to do. They think it's the next Apple and cure for you know, hepatitis C, simplex, you know, herpes simplex, and it's not, man, it's not. They don't know these things. So you gotta, unfortunately, our job, every dollar lost is a dollar gain or every dollar gain is a dollar lost. Someone will lose on the side that you're winning. It's just, it's inevitable. Welcome to life, you know, even nature is very cruel. You know, a beautiful animal could be walking through the, you know, the jungles of Bali and then get eaten in a second. And that's, you know, 
take advantage of stupidity is is as harsh as that sounds but i'm very blunt like i said all right and then the last one Participation. I'm anticipating that a breakdown is going to happen, a death candle slam through VWAP, or I'm going to wait for that death candle slam through VWAP, wait for that confirmation and hit on a pop back up to VWAP. That is confirmation. You're waiting for the thing to happen. How do I stay safe on the short side? Don't short phase two and three. Uh, biotechs, no major acquisitions, big names attached, and anything under two million float. Those are my personal rules. Well, Number one. So my personal rules, guys, I'll say it again. I <laughs> I do not short phase two and three biotechs. I think they're very dangerous. They have a way of coming back. They really do. Um, uh, let's watch this for a second. Hold on. And this is this is really making a move. Check this out. AK. This is really making a move, guys. And guess what the tell was? Guess what the tell? My volume thing. That's the tell. Watch. People are gonna start. Te I've never heard this talked about ever, and people are gonna start fucking teaching this. I know because I'm like making webinars off this like competitive like people are going to start being like oh you know 40 percent volume level now it's breaking now watch for a reversal <laughs> i know it i just know it because i've never heard anyone talk about this this is what i look for that 40 percent level guys it starts really breaking this level i'm telling you it makes big moves and this is why i stay safe and i do not hold like i used to because i figured things like this out um actually on my own i just man you, you watch enough screen time and you start really understanding some shit um Josh, how about those moments that need a reaction over patients? Well, well we, could, we could talk about that. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let me just clear this last bit up, is I don't short phase two and three biotechs. I do not short major acquisitions. You know, Apple is trying to acquire AKTX. I don't want any part of that, man. That's a huge company, you know, billions market cap. I'm not, why are they looking to acquire, you know, XYZ that's, you know, 20 million market cap. I'm not into that. And then, um, and then lastly, a big name attached, which is kind of the same thing, but it's just, any time a big name is attached, I'm not interested, let alone a major acquisition. We're looking to acquire XYZ. I don't even like when, you know, fuck, dude. I don't even like when Target's like, hey, you know, we just brought this into our line of products. You know, sometimes if the pattern's there, I will trade it. But I don't like big names attached, man. Whole Foods and, um, God, what was that? BLNK way back in the day. I think that was the same one. Like Whole Foods started putting charging stations for, I think it was this stock. B L N K started putting it's not even trading really anymore, but man, back in the day, dude, this gave us a fucking headache. This gave us a headache, bro. I think it was, I think it was, was it this one? I can't remember. Maybe it was this run or whatever, but man, we I remember me and a lot of guys who were who didn't use hard stops back then and we got smoked, man. B L N K really, really um shine their light on us because here's the thing, man, like Whole Foods was looking at this company and you know, BLNK and they put like I think car charging stations in like their parking lots or something. And BLNK was making those charging stations. Like just the fact that Whole Foods name was attached to it, it just brought in so many people who are uneducated in, in, in trading retail. And it's like, it's like your grandpa that, or your dad that like goes to work, but before he goes to work, he checks stock quotes, he knows nothing. And he goes, man, that's some really good news. I'm going to long this. And then, it, you know, enough people do that supply and demand and that stock, you know, you gotta be careful, bro. You gotta be careful. All right, so that's the video. That's kind of what I wanted to cover, guys. Now I can go over a little bit more of like, um, like questions and stuff. But let's see if, uh, let's see. So, yeah. So reactionary moments. So I do a lot of reaction trades. I do this is a reaction trade. This is not necessarily a fan. So there's fantasy orders, right? Like your um, AKTX. Like this is a fantasy order, right? Like in the morning. Like what are fantasy orders? You know, I see the breakdown. Pre-market, it's opening up very high, very far from its highs. I'm drawing my lines, and I'm maybe placing fantasy orders right here. I, they're already preset before anything. So fill, 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 and then boom, you know, whatever. That's a fantasy order. But a reactionary trade is if this was to death candle slam through VWAP right here, then I'm just waiting for that, and then I'm slamming. So these are my entries. And the next pop. That's the difference. That's the difference. What's a you know a very planned out. A move or what's a reactionary trade and that's a very very good understanding of that um yeah and then uh let's see i uh do, do, i miss anything sorry guys i was i just went on a huge rant i was trying to give you guys like time to answer ask questions and stuff uh, yep latest market sentiment more than stock that yep talked about that um yeah, so do you, I mean, fuck, 
I've been talking for an hour and a half. Do you guys have any kind of parting questions or anything that you think I didn't cover? Or we covered a lot of stuff today, man. A lot of good stuff, I think. Hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys learned something. Impart some wisdom, I hope. Yeah, thank God I had a coffee before this, man. I was tired as hell today. So that coffee really sent me through the roof on enthusiasm. <laughs> um, yeah, El Cooley, just, uh, just every Wednesday, brother, every, uh, every Wednesday um, at 2 p.m. And I, do, I, I record the Q&As. Oh, look at this, dude. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this volume trick. This is why I, well, this is why, like I said, guys, I don't touch anything in the last hour. Had this been midday, I might have channel traded it, but this is why I don't trade last hour, and this is why I also do not trade if it, if it starts really making moves above that 40% volume level. Look at this bullshit. Or, or reverse engineer. Reverse engineer for a long, guys. If this starts doing that over the 40% level, that could be a hell of a move. So again, man, like there's so much stuff that you can just start gauging in price action and volume. This is why I put so much importance in volume. I love volume, man. I think volume is a huge, huge indicator. I think the only things you need, literally this is the only thing you need on your chart. You don't need Bollinger Bands. You don't need RSI and all that stuff. You need the chart. You need VWAP. And you need to read volume. That's, that's how I do it, man. And that's how Don Alex do it. That's all you need, really. You can get fancy with other stuff if you need to, but I, mean, I wouldn't. Um, yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I actually didn't place any trades today. I'm trying to just feel out the market. My my go-to is the first red day, like um, RKDA and YRIV yesterday, and like things like DMPI. But um, oh, DMPI, dude. You, let me just dude, let me talk about this for a second. God damn, this is the easiest play in trading, in my opinion. This is my number one bread and butter setup. Um, I, just this is just my opinion, guys. I mean, like, dude, this is. Are you kidding me? It, it doesn't get easier on the short side for me on this. This is a sympathy runner to things like RKDA or just chasers in general because the market's coming up. And then here's what happens. This freaking thing, dude, starts running on really no catalyst. There's farmer, you know, like pumpers involved, whoever it is. I don't care who it is, just the pumper involved. And here's the thing, man. Just when longs think that this is a good long, boom. That's the confirmation I'm talking about, guys. This is what I look for every day. A stock that's on its way up. And then longs go last minute. They go, you know what? Maybe we don't long this. Boom. Slam, slam, slam. Add, add, add. And then my risk is at the top of the death candle. And if it goes on, I'm not trading it again. Simple, simple, simple. Trading is not easy, but it is simple. Trading is not easy, but it is simple. So I'm waiting for this every day. Stock goes up, 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 up. No catalyst. Not really. Sympathy. It only makes it better. Slam candle through VWAP. The bigger the candle, I'm slamming lows. I'm adding all the way up to with an ultimate risk above this. I am willing to risk a lot of money on these because the win ratio is very good for me at least and i'm used to these so you know with things like this man uh, i'm slamming lows dude this comes in i'll hit here 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 and i will give myself some room and then this just above ultimate death count that's the ultimate stop man it goes above this i'm not touching again that day hell no <laughs> yeah that's okay like just be careful of that man just just watch because like this is a this is just not a good stock man I and mean, if you go to the daily chart this is just shit dude look at this down 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 um each the last like three days it went up wick up wick down this is just this is terrible oh my god did anybody pay attention to <laughs> look at this bullshit oh my god i didn't even i was just talking i didn't even notice dude you short this yesterday like this is the type of shit i would swing you know, when you touch this and you got a great average making super, super new lows in the close, dude, you sometimes you just wake up to heaven on earth and you wake up to this shit. <laughs> that, that happened. That's practically an offering. In fact, it may be. Like, what was the fuck I did? <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to this day. Uh, whatever, guys. I'm, I'm wrapping this up, but uh, I can figure that out later. But my point is, it's just figure out what works for you guys and just rinse repeat every single day. Um, how do you stop yourself from revenge trading? You just ask yourself, man, you look in the mirror, Clement, and you go, hey, dude, do I want to keep losing money? No, I give myself two losses a day. If I get in, well, here's the thing, you know, I've got a very proven system that works for me. If I do the first one and I short right here and it goes back above the death, the, the death candle above this line and I'm cutting it, you know, I'm cutting it. That's, that's strike one. Then it doesn't have death, death candle or death line doesn't work and strike two, I'm done for the day. I close up, man. I don't want to lose any more money. My psychology can't take more than two losses a day. You know what I mean? Then there's something wrong. I'm like, what am I doing? 
So again, man, if you want to lose money, you want to lose twice and just keep going and going. Nah, dude, just next day. Thank you, Thor. Uh, thanks, Stocks there. Yeah, anytime, man. Uh, Ole, yo. <laughs> yeah, the lost man. Dude, great stuff today, guys. I'm going to end it right here because I'm absolutely wiped and my, uh, my voice is shot. But uh, sick stuff today, guys. We'll do some more stuff next week. And now that I got charting up, we can just talk about things like this or what I look for, how to stay safe or whatever. I hope you enjoyed that video. Now you can watch it back. Um, yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right. See you guys. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.